truth the way to life. He the truth the way to life. Hey, get ready for your host, Pastor Junior, aka Robert Monson, with help from above radio talk show. Amen, amen. So here we are once again with SOV 106.9 FM. And, uh, you know, this is uh, uh, Pastor Junior once again with Help From Above Ministries, Help From Above Radio Show. Uh, I want to thank each and every one of you from the Riverside County, from the San Bernardino County, uh, from the uh, Orange County, LA County. Yeah, pues, pues todos los counties, amen. <laughs> uh, but hey, tonight we have a we have a testimony, a, a testimony uh, conversion story with uh, with Pastor um, Pastor Joshua from Potter's House Ministry. So let us welcome uh, Pastor Joshua from Potter's House Ministry. Um, he's going to be sharing his testimony tonight, right? Amen. But but what is a testimony? Well, a testimony, a testimony, right? Once again, a testimony is known as a conversion story, a conversion story of of a person a person's journey to becoming a Christian. It's telling someone else's, it's t- telling someone else about your relationship with God. It's a life dedicated to Christ. A life dedicated to Christ is a powerful, powerful testimony, right? The heavens rejoice over one sinner who repents. Amen. Luke 15, 7. Everyone you tell, er- every time you tell your story about how you came to, to have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you give glory and honor to his name. You give glory and honor to him, and he is greatly pleased with you. Amen. A Christian who wants to live his life as a testimony for Jesus will love God above all else and love others above himself. When a believer shares what Jesus has done in his life and serves God and others in a tangible ways, he will increasingly reflect the life-giving power of Christ into a dark and discouraging world, right? A testimony, a testimony on on how a person encountered the God of the Bible, right? So here we have uh, once again with uh, Pastor Joshua <clears throat> from Potter House Ministry, right? So tell us, um, Pastor Joshua, uh, how how did you encounter the God of the Bible? First of all, I want to thank God. I want to give Him all the glory, all the praise, and I believe I am able to. Uh, be here with you, brother, because His grace is not a. Uh, there's so many things that happened in my life that uh, I recognized them that uh, it was all God helping me into Him. Amen. I want to give Him all the glory, all the praise. I'm grateful for salvation and uh, something that I kind of use. Um, that's not the right word. It's the something that I keep to remind myself that uh, I should live grateful. I, I should I should live a life uh, uh, with gratitude for what God has done for me. And um, it's been a long road. Um, I gave my life to the Lord in 1993, January the 3rd, the 3, approximately about 12 o'clock. And I'm thinking because that was the end of the service, that of the morning, the morning service, January 3, 1993, 12 o'clock, the Potter's House in the city of Santa Ana. That's when, uh, that's when I bow my knee before the Lord. I have done that before many times. But I think uh, this last time, it was different because it was a commitment that uh, willingly I made. It was not something like other times, God helped me take away these habits and see you later. You know, I didn't want nothing to do with God. I just wanted him to help me. But this time, it was different. Uh, It's a long story. (laughs) I'm thinking where to start or how to uh, start this. 
metamorphosis a man of what God has done in my life from from dead uh, to life amen and again I don't want to take away nothing because everything that I have everything that I am is because him the Lord Jesus Christ and I want to read a scripture brother if that's okay uh, I want I want to use this scripture. This is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse uh, 1 through 4. And before I, I go on with my testing, when I want to read this. Um, verse 1 says, Be careful to obey all the commands I'm giving you today. Then you will live and multiply, and you will enter and occupy the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors. Remember how the Lord your God led you through the wilderness for 40 years, humbling you and testing you to probe your character and to find out whether or not you will really obey His commands. Yes, He humbled you by letting you go hungry and then feeding you with manna, a food previously unknown to you and your ancestors. He did it to teach you that people need more than bread for their life. Real life comes by feeding on every word of the Lord. Verse 4. For all these 40 years, your clothes didn't wear out and your feet didn't blister or swell. What a tremendous testimony, amen, that Moses is given to the people of Israel. And this book here is a, a remembrance. Remember, it's because these people already went through it. For 40 years, they've been in the desert. And they have already known the Word of God. They have already uh, walked with the Lord for 40 years. Uh, they did good and they did bad. And uh, there was a lot of learning, a lot of teaching. And that's why uh, I started with, uh, with gratefulness. Because I understand that... Uh, now uh, I, I can look back and see there was God taking me through all the valleys and all the places where he took me. Um, I'm thinking about Romans chapter 8, verse 28. When Paul writes to the Roman church and tells them that all things will work good. All things, he says. So I, I think of that. And um, I, I'm looking back. I, I'm trying to put little highlights of my life together here. Um, back in the early 70s. I was growing up. I was I was uh, I was born in 1966, so I'm thinking 1972, 1973. I looked at my brother one time. That's one of the pictures that I have in my mind of one of my brothers. I come from a large family: twelve, six uh, sisters, and six uh, brothers. One of my brothers, George, is kind of in the middle, sitting on the porch outside the house, smoking a cigarette. Not really smoking it, just letting the cigarette consume by himself, low notches. I mean, he's loaded with heroin. And I knew it was heroin. I, I, I knew it was not uh, uh, weed. It was something more than that. And I said to myself, I would never do that. And I was a young kid. I was, you know, really young. And, but already with an understanding of what, what good and bad was. So that went by. My brother went to prison many times. My mom behind him, helping him all the time. My dad wasn't happy about it, but my mom always kind of helped George. Another time was another brother. I remember he took some downers. This is back in the early 70s. So still, again, this is Israel, my brother Israel, Rilo. And uh, he came home. I remember we were watching TV and he came home with all oh, his face was bleeding. 
all scratch in one side of his face. And he said he fell off the bike. He was riding the bike with some guys. He fell. But what happened, he took some downers and he was uh, seating, kicking back, seating down. And he fell forward. When those downers, I guess, uh, uh, did their thing, he fell forward and fell on his face. So little, little pictures that I have, uh, bad pictures, but I remember those things and, uh, you know, they stay in my mind. Later on, and uh, I don't know what happened with my parents. They got separated. Um, we went to live with my mom. And she got together with another man. It was really hard, but I was so young that I couldn't make uh, uh, make sense of everything. So, you know, it was just life. You know, they're adults and they know what they're doing. And we moved. We moved from the neighborhood where I was born and raised there to another neighborhood. It was a little more kind of better, you know. Some of my neighbors were in school, uh, what I mean, school, university, and college and things like that so it was a little bit different but there was a lot of drugs this is early 80s late 70s early 80s and um, we were there living with my mom we were go back and forth every day to the other house with with my dad because the school was there and my mom and my dad had a, uh, a relationship and i couldn't understand you know they they got along and my mom used to go and make food and wash clothes and then leave back out of, you know, kind of weird situation. But that's how I was. I couldn't understand everything. Uh, growing up in this area here, uh, it was a little bit different, but there was a lot of drugs. So we started, the, you know, weed was everywhere and it was really common, but at the same time, downers began to pop in the, in the picture, pop up in the picture. So not too long after that, I was selling downers and, uh, and uh, using them. And I'm, I'm going to guess I was 12, 13 maybe. And we got hooked. I mean, I remember another guy, me and him, we were selling for somebody else and we're getting high and guess what we ended up going to a place to another neighborhood and we ended up buying heroin and I did heroin for the first time when I was 13 something that uh, the reason that I was sharing with you that uh, I wasn't going to do that when I you know you know thinking back looking at my brother going to prison and all the trouble that he created in the house. And I'm finding myself at the age of 13 doing heroin for the first time. Of course, I didn't like it. Didn't feel good. It was different, but it didn't took long. That uh, It just got, I got a hook on it. So, in 1991, Right in the start of the year, 1990, 1981, my dad passed away. And um, we got the news. I remember I was, um, I was sitting down with some friends inside of a car and it was really cold. We had jackets and I don't know, we were smoking pot, more likely. And somebody came and gave me the news about my dad and, you know, it was, it was hard. Two weeks later, my mom passed away. At this time, I'm 15. And um, how can I put it here? Uh, I didn't have any, any uh, resistance, any stops, anything to hold me back. It was like a free reign that uh, to do anything. And at the same time, I'm, I'm looking back now that uh, some type of rebellion 
was birthed in my heart that uh, I said to myself, nobody's going to tell me nothing. Nobody, not even my brother, nobody. I, I was just out of my mind. And uh, I, I, um, I did that. No stopping. That was, that was just a, an open door for me. Perhaps grieving. Whatever it was, I took that and I ran with that. And that's when a lot of things began to spiral down on the wrong direction. Really young. I didn't mention this, but uh, I'm going to be talking. I'm going to be back and forth here. But all this thing happened in the city of Tijuana. I was born and raised in Tijuana. When my parents passed away a few months after, my sister, who was living in Santana, she told me that uh, I was going to be moving with her. She didn't ask me. <laughs> she said, you know what? This is what's going to happen. You're going to be coming to my house. Your brother's already there and your sister, and you want to move with us. And um, so I said, okay, you know, something different. And I came and she put me uh, in high school. I entered high school. Everything was okay, I guess. But I started smoking pot. I started getting a hold of downers again and selling in school, ninth grade. I remember my sister found my uh, my stash that I have and she uh, she called me and she was inside the, the bathroom and she called me, she says, come here. And when I opened the door, went in, she, she had the pills in her hands and flashed them down. And I got so upset that she was doing that. And uh, I said, you know what? That's it, I'm moving out of here. And I left. I went back to TJ. Back in TJ, I got my two other brothers over there. They're getting high with heroin. And I just went back and uh, with them. And it was just a, a crazy, crazy thing. And what I mean by crazy, when you're in, uh, in heroin, I mean, you got to feed the dragon. You can't skip a bit. I mean, this is every day, all day. 24 7. This is not a just once in a while. This is a habit that you gotta uh, uh, um, keep up with. And the only way to keep up, you gotta do, you know, rob or steal, sell drugs. And that's where uh, I found myself. Together with others, a lot of violence in the lifestyle. I'm not too sure. Uh, when what year this happened but one of the my neighbors one of uh, the homies of friend got killed by another friend they they had a fight and me and my brother we ended up getting busted one of my uh, george and, and we were using a lot and you know just going to jail was just a, a no-no just sick and this is tijuana and um, even though we're not, didn't have any part of this, we were there when the, the crime happened, but we didn't have anything to do. We we got busted. We stayed there for, a, I don't know, a week or two in jail, got out. But I'm just giving you little, little parts of uh, uh, the, the dark side that a lot of people don't talk about it. The dark side of, uh, uh, of uh, an addiction. And now when I look back in a long time ago, I've been saved for 33 years. I've been walking with the Lord and I'm, I'm grateful again. But I look back and uh, it's, what happened to me is it was something spiritual. Heroin is more than a, 
I don't know how to explain it, but it was, it's just, it consume you, it drive you, and it takes over your life. I couldn't keep $5, I couldn't keep any money in my pocket because it was just a straight to that connection. And uh, I remember after my, my friend got killed, I came back to San Ana. Of course, I was hooked. I didn't know what was going to happen, but I came back hoping for some relief from a break. And uh, I didn't want to leave my habits. I remember I used to, uh, my sister was going to church already at this time. And I would go to the, uh, a church once in a while and also Bible studies they had. But I was, I would do heroin before that, before going. And I would be nodding out in the, in the, in the, in the service or doing the Bible study. But the point that I'm sharing this because even though I was trapped, God was speaking to me. And that's where the, the word of God comes to life and the power of the word of God comes to action. You know, Romans that I, I mentioned, 828. Even though I couldn't see nothing in darkness, I just wanted God to help me in some things, but I didn't want to be with him. So coming back to San Ana, trying to do right, by doing wrong, it just led me to a whole bunch of other stuff. Getting busted and going to jail. I remember the last time I went to jail, I think it was 1990, 91, I think. Uh, no, 92. I went in with two. Uh, residential burglaries and this is how low you you get that's how how uh, trap would become if you're a puppet and you don't even know you just thinking you're like any other addict you're like all your friends who are doing the same thing but just trap and uh, and and and, and uh, that brings me to the scripture. I think it's enough. I don't remember when the man, one of David's uh, men, jumps into uh, a pit and is snowing. It's all muddy and jumps in to fire a lion. There's a lion stuck inside the pit, and one of David's men jumps in to kill the lion sounds crazy <laughs> but you know what sometimes we have to do crazy things I um, the, the last time that I mentioned that I I, I, I went to jail and uh, I again I look back and uh, I see the hand of the Lord because they gave me time this time. They gave me a lot of time. And uh, I I went to court. I signed the time that I was going to do. And uh, when I got back to the county, they told me, hey, you got to go back to court. And I couldn't understand why. I already had my sentence and everything. And the attorney that I had was helping me to, uh, to get probation. And I end up, end up getting probation. My wife got involved in this. And uh, somehow the, the door was open for me not to do the time. And that's when uh, I, uh, I recognized where I was. I was a young man, early, mid-twenties, really burned out, tired, tired, uh, there was no, no uh, hope. I take that back, there was hope, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to bow down, I didn't want to give up, I didn't want to do these things. 
And thank God that God got involved. So this is almost, this is when I got saved, when I got out of 1992, I got out. I didn't do the time. They released me with five years probation. But I need to go back a little bit. And this is to 1987. I was running like a, a madman, doing a lot of heroin. And um, in 1986, I met uh, my wife. She wasn't my wife at that time. And uh, we started going out and uh, one thing led to another. We have a baby. She was born in December, 1987. And uh, they told us that uh, she was going to stay in the hospital for some time. I, really honest, I didn't care. I didn't, I wasn't really thinking about my daughter or what was going on with her. I just selfish, just thinking about myself, you know, telling my wife that, you know, we're gonna go through this, no problem, and she's gonna get out of the hospital and you know, nothing's gonna happen. Things began to develop that uh, we find out that my daughter has several policy. So she, uh, she was born with cerebral palsy, and uh, we had her. She recently passed away. She, we had her for uh, 33 years. But I'm looking back where uh, where I was, and all those things that uh, that uh, I let those things happen. You know, not only with myself. Uh, my family. Um, it was just crazy. Spiral out of control. Just going down every time. Deeper and deeper and deeper. And. Um, I, I look back and I, I, I see the hand of God. Working in different ways. And, 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 and using people. And. Even though, you know, uh, everything that was happening, God was working behind the scenes. In my testimony, you know, I'm talking about uh, 87, early 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000. Um, God was working. God was doing something. And now I, I, can, I can look back. But... My testimony is not old. I'm still in the making. God has not done with me. I'm still in the process of, of growing and learning and and appreciate what God is doing. And again, I go back to that uh, being grateful with God, His goodness. When Joshua and Caleb came back, you know, from a spy in the land with the other 10 guys, they brought this uh, first uh, fruits to show Moses and to show the people. You know, I'm, 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 I'm having those first fruits because God has allowed me to come in into this promised land. I know the promised land is going to be heaven, but right now, here on earth, even though things sometimes get a little out of control and we can't see the whole picture, and all this, in the midst of all this, God is showing me how good it's going to be by giving me right now some of these grapes. They said that two guys were carrying this bundle this big old uh, thing of grapes to show everybody else by me having my kids in church with me I'm not going to say that, say that my kids are perfect but they're there in church 
trying to serve God, making their own testimony, to me is more than anything else. I mean, I can't put a price. There's no number here. Because I understand where my kids could have been. And I understand how the devil works. But above all that, I see God. And that's why I'm saying that my testimony is not over. It's still in the making. After 33 years, they God gave me an opportunity to start over again. Uh, how can I not be grateful? How can I deny this goodness being filled with the Holy Spirit? Be able to, to share this with you, this testimony. And looking back after so many years, how I cannot be grateful. And, you know, it's so hard right now to give my testimony in, in just a, a little bit of time, all the things that happened, but at the same time, it's so good to share the goodness of God. Because there's power in the Word of God. Perhaps my words are, don't have any power, but I know God's Word has power. And I know there's people in my, where I used to be, they're looking just for a little bit of hope. My brother George used to say, you know what, I have these dreams sometimes that uh, I'm inside my house, sitting on my couch, And I was kind of, and what else, George? That's it, he says. I don't have none of that. I don't even close to have that. I know who I am. I know what, you know, I'm just a paranoid addict. I'm never going to accomplish nothing. I'm never going to have a house. I'm never going to have a couch. I'm never going to have nothing. And I understand now what he was saying. How the devil in the Bible calls him the, the liar. How he lies to us, how people live without hope. You know, those words that are, hey, I have this dream that I, I'm in a house sitting on the couch. And to us, it's nothing. To us, it's nothing. And uh, uh, another thing about my, my daughter who passed away, she, uh, she had a hard time. Um, swallowing her saliva she was always with saliva in her in her mouth and her face we had a bib on her and she was in a wheelchair and you know something so simple that we never have a we don't even think about it you know we're breathing and and doing our our, our system is working by itself but when those things don't work you you think about it you know and that's how I been trying to develop myself with an attitude of, of gratefulness, even for, for simple things. Work, you know. There's so many things that God has done in, in my life and is doing right now. And just another f fruit from the, from the promise done is faith. God has placed faith in my heart. I just, I was telling Brother Junior right now that I, two weeks ago, I did a funeral for my older brother, who passed away. And um, it was funny because I took some papers with me and I preach on this church. This is two blocks from my house in the city of Tijuana, where I grew up and my brothers still, his kids are still living in the same house, my parents' house. And uh, when I, I was doing the sermon, I had these papers that I wanted to show uh, the church. And that was when my mom presented me. You know, when I was born, it just this is 1966. And, she took me to church. She was already going to church. She took me to church. Another paper that I took, it was uh, her ties.
for the whole year. And there was a paper that they gave her, like a certificate from 1968 that uh, she paid, she gave to the church. And uh, I was reading those papers to the church because that church been there for established for many, many years, an apostolic church. And the, and the people were excited. But the point that I want to make is that uh, there's, there's, there's a background. My mom was going to church. And then just recently, not too long ago, one of my, my sister was telling me that uh, about my grandparents on my mom's side. They got saved. And my grandpa got saved through his brother who gave him, who shared with him the good news. Or late uh, 1800s. I don't know if any uh, buddy have heard about the Cristeros in Mexico. There was a, a, a religious movement back in the time of a revolution. There was Mexico was being developed, and a lot of things were happening. And one of those things that were happening is that there was a movement of uh, Christianity. And my uh, my grandpa got saved by his brother and then my grandpa his wife my grandmother so there were seeds planted by them my mom had a one sister only she was a teacher she was a principal she was a teacher and a principal of a big uh, school so they they were okay they were kind of the poor side of the family. My 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 dia, my aunt only had two, uh, three kids. My mom had 12. The reason I'm sharing this is because I believe my grandpa, when he prayed for my mom and her kids, more likely, I'm, I'm guessing here, he leaned more towards my mom when he was praying, asking God for favor. And what I'm saying that uh, prayer works. Even though God will let us walk through the desert. In verse 4, when I read, he, Moses reminds them. He says, I'm trying to find it here, verse 4. For all these 40 years, your clothes didn't wear out and your feet didn't blister or swallow. Or swallow, he says. What an amazing thing, man, because I can I can say that because the prayers of other people. God let us go through things, things that we wanted to do ourselves away from him. But he's so faithful. And he's going to be faithful to my kids. Like he was faithful to my mom and her kids. I believe God gave me the, a gift that is called faith. And I believe my kids are going to be part of this. And I'm, I'm glad I'm happy. We're living in... The Bible calls it right after the death of Christ to now they call it the end times. We're living in the end times. Christ can come back anytime. What a, an honor and privilege to, to agree with the Lord, to walk with the Lord in these times. What would it be if, uh, if I wouldn't just go my own way? Go to prison and do the time and come out with the funky attitude. And but God gave me an opportunity. I I was when I gave my life to the Lord. I was in my mid twenties. 
of Fifth DA now. More than half of my life I've, I've been walking with the Lord. And um, I'm grateful for that. I'm, 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 I'm really grateful that uh, I can share this with you. And I know there's many other things that are going to come. Many valleys, same as mountains too. But I have faith that all things are going to work for good. Any any other questions, brother? Do you have for me? No, that's good. <clears throat> no, that's, good. that's 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 really good. That's um, <clears throat> uh, really good. Uh, your testimony is really quite moving, and I, I and I believe that a lot of people that are listening to this um, that are listening tonight um, to this testimony are going to be really blessed. Um, you know, once again, a testimony. A testimony is known as a conversion story. It's a person's journey to becoming a Christian. <clears throat> it's telling someone else. It's telling someone else about your relationship with God, right? It's telling someone else about your relationship with God, right? So once again, uh, today we have a testimony, a, tem a testimony, a conversion story with uh, Pastor Joshua from uh, Potter House Ministry. Amen. Hey, but we're gonna be right back, and uh, we'll be right back. Uh, with uh, with with uh, Pastor Joshua's testimony, right? A testimony, a conversion story with uh, Pastor Joshua <clears throat> from Powderhouse Ministry. Amen. Just uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Amen, amen. So here we are back with um, with a testimony, right? A testimony, a conversion story with um, with with Pastor Joshua from Potter House Ministry, and uh, a testimony, a testimony on how a person encountered the, encountered the God of the Bible, and uh, as we heard, uh, still Pastor Joshua, he gave us that. Uh, he gave his life to Christ in 1993, along with his, you know, getting out of getting out of uh, jail or prison. I don't know which one of the two, but in 1992, amen. Uh, but you know, once again, a testimony, the testimony of how Christ came into my life and made me a different person, right? So tell us, uh, Pastor Joshua, is the the testimony of how uh, how Christ came into my life? I believe He gave us that. But how did God, right? How did Christ? make you a different person i think like i said he's still not uh in the working uh we have not yet seen the final product and we will see if you stay for the end the book of Ephesians says that we will see everything how it's going to be praise god to that i i, I want to share something that uh that is i think uh It's, it's um, really neat in this walking into the church, coming into this uh, big step. Because I don't know why. I don't know why I, 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 I fear um, at that time people, what they're going to say, what they're going to think. You know, Even though I, I was broken, I was down. I didn't have anything to show, you know, the pride in, in mankind. It was 1992. Um, I think it was Halloween. They had a they had a play in the church, a drama for Halloween, and uh, we got invited. But I just want to take a few steps back because how this happened to the invitation and, and when I was in the county you know fighting my case there and then finding out that uh, I lost and I was going to go to prison so during the time this guy came in and uh, I knew him he was there for murder And uh, we started talking, we, we knew him from, from the calles, from the streets, and uh, this guy was saying what he did, uh, the crime that he committed, it was many, many years before that. And he asked God for forgiveness, and he was living for God and walking with the Lord using his ID, his name and everything. He said that he got stopped on the freeway and uh, they stopped him and uh, the highway patrol told me, you got a hold, you got a warrant. I got to take you to jail. So he knew, you know, after being, he was running, he didn't want to go to jail or do time, but God was preparing him. God was doing something behind the scenes here. And uh, I remember that night when uh, when I seen him, when he came into into the the, the my, my cell, in a man's cell, in the county jail in Santa Ana. I went to church that night because God was already dealing with me. And uh, I didn't mind going to church. I liked it. Um, I felt good listening to the word of God. And even though I was not saved, it's just like it. I, I, I always been the type of guy that... Uh, I wanted knowledge, I wanted understanding, and uh, I used to read a lot, and a lot of secular stuff, and uh, the Bible too. Even though I was loaded on heroin, I would read my Bible. I would have a Bible always. When I was living in my car, homeless, I was, you know, I had a Bible there with me, and uh, you know, I would read it. So, uh, uh, I remember I came back from, uh, from church, went back to my cell, and he's there, and we started talking, and I mean, just right away, 
five minutes, ten minutes in the conversation. He says, "Hey, I'm uh, I'm serving God. I'm I'm a Christian, and uh, and you know, what do you think?" And uh, he prayed with with that prayer. He gave me an address for a church in Santa Ana. He gave me the address weeks later, but the address was for it was for the church. To make the long story short, I ended up getting out in late 1992. I had that address. I gave it to my wife, and at that time we only had one. Uh, my daughter, she was little. I think she was uh, three or four years old, something like that. And uh, she said, "Let's go to church." She started going to church before me, and then uh, she encouraged me and I was playing the part no, I don't want to go to church blah, blah, blah. but I did want to go I was like I said I was broken I was I was destroyed inside and didn't have any answer didn't know what was going to happen to me fresh out of jail you know I didn't want to get again and started with heroin I didn't have anything to support me to help me to uh, to say no to heroin It was just that man's will that I had at that time. And I remember I went back to TJ in December. And um, I went to the house and my brother and a couple other friends were slamming heroin. And he asked me, you want some? They go, no, I don't want it. I'm just going to drink. But the conviction inside of me, it was already God was already moving mountains and moving all kinds of things. I didn't want to get high. And like I said, this is uh, when I got out, um, the Halloween drama. After that, I started going to church. I remember one time uh, the pastor uh, shook my hand and I kind of leaned forward and a pack of cigarettes fell off my, my, my shirt. <laughs> and I felt so embarrassed that, you know, the cigarettes just fell off and uh, the pastor just laughed and didn't say nothing. So when I went to Tijuana and I saw my brother uh, messing around, I was already going to church a little bit, you know, but enough because God was already convicting me. Came back Christmas, New Year's. I think it was New Year's when I went to TJ. When I came back, I'm telling you, January 3, 12 o'clock p.m., 1993, I bowed my knee on that altar I said you know what yes do it hasta aquí no more God already I'm willingly want to give you my life you want to take it you want to you want to receive me you know I want to try it I want to do this time I want I want to do it different and God did it He was just waiting for me. Everything was ready. The dinner was ready. The supper was ready. Man. I uh, I gave my life to the Lord that day, and I haven't looked back. I haven't went back. So I stay there in church. It was tremendous. It was. Uh, The house of God, the house of praise. I felt so good in there. I struggled in the beginning, just giving up, you know, still the attitude of, of, of uh, 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 pride, you know. The brothers used to go to my house and uh, trying to encourage me. And I would tell them, hey, I call you, don't call me. <laughs> I'll call you. <laughs> But I was hurting inside, even though I would say that I was hurting inside and I want. So I stayed. I stayed and uh, little by little, you know, I started liking it more. And just maybe months or I don't know how long I was there in church. I started getting involved. Little things. One time my pastor asked me, Phil, hey, you don't mind wearing a tie? And I laughed. I said, What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know where Tyson, you know. 
like I want to say you're crazy. That's that's nonsense. You know, I don't do that. You know, that's, that's 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 for you. <laughs> um, maybe two three weeks after he asked me, I bought a tie. I can't not go to church without a tie now. Suit. I like to give God the best that I have. Um, I stay in church. Little by little, I start liking it more, learning. I had a God, God put a passion in me, like a thirst, like a hunger for his word. I wanted to learn. I remember I would write and write and write things, questions, and I would look for an answer in the Bible. And I would be reading all the time and, and buying books and learning. And, and we had that uh, atmosphere on the, uh, on the church of uh, discipleship. Not just myself, the other guys who were there. Brothers in Christ, they would hook. Most of these guys, not all of them, were heroin addicts kind of background neighborhood and lifestyle and so i felt that uh, 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 good at home with them you know but it was a process of learning and growing and, and, and liking it and just god moving in my life and you know learning things being filled with the holy spirit uh, many many things um we would do a lot of street outreaches from uh, most of us knocking on the door of a, of a, a house. And Santa Ana is a, um, a gold mine. You can go to one neighborhood and there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people. You can knock on doors and one after another and talk to people, share the gospel. And, we will pray with people left and right. We had events like dramas and concerts. And so that's that atmosphere that I, I began to grow up. And I stay there in the church. I stay with pastor, with my pastor, about 10, 12, 10 years, I think. We were going to conference. Every year we had two conferences in, in Arizona, in Prescott, Arizona. And we will go, I will go to one or two and um, the more I went, the more I liked it, you know, seeing, you know, people that I knew being sent out to start pioneering work in different cities, different countries, and just uh, something different that I never seen before, never heard before either. So um, I'm seeing all these things. And I remember one day we went and pastored, uh, we went out to eat. And during the break, and he asked me, I would like to send you out, but I don't want to send you out if you don't want to. I didn't want to because I was not qualified. I was not uh, the man, you know, that I, my head, I, was, I have built, you know, I will see other people, but not myself. But God was heavy on me. God was working on me. And one of the things that uh, made me change my mind, it was a need. The need of telling others. Not the name, the tag name, pastor. It was it's still to me, you know, it's just the need that we have right now in the world. And I talked to my wife. We we said, yes. Let's try it. He sent me to uh, Anaheim. Because my first language is Spanish. So I told my pastor, let me do it in Spanish. And he said, no. no I want you to... Uh, because if I do any a change or move or something, you know, not everybody knows how to talk Spanish. So I'm, I'm fearful. I'm, I'm wondering if, how, how this is going to be done. <laughs> so I 
at the end, I was insisting, Pastor, let me do it in Spanish. There's so much Spanish speaking people that I am mean, to my right, to my left, behind me, in front of me. Everybody's all Spanish speaking here in Anaheim. And uh, he changed his mind. He said, go ahead, go ahead and do it in Spanish. And uh, guess what happened? I started, uh, you know, I started the Bible study in the house. I'm going to use the word white people. <laughs> I started getting newcomers. They were all white people. <laughs> it was good. It was it was tremendous, the sense of humor that God has. And uh, we started in the house. We started in the house with a, a handful of people in the we build up and we have to understand that a, a church is a, a living um, how can I say it um, like a living cell and as that's something that I, I went out with this in mind that the people was not going to grow overnight it was going to take a lot of patience working with people because I needed that myself I wasn't built, I wasn't uh, developed overnight. It took many years with the hammer and the chisel, taking chunks off <laughs> and putting new in. And uh, I went I went out with that in mind, that uh, when you work with people, it's, not, it's, it's gonna take time. And me and my wife, we, we think, uh, uh, right now I'm not pastoring, I'm, I'm, I'm in a church, uh, uh, a friend of mine uh, in the city of Orange. Um, but who knows? I'm, I'm evangelizing, going to uh, different churches, uh, Mexico. Here, recently, I went to Mexico City. Uh, I went to Bakersfield and a few other places. So God is using me. But you know what? I go back, brother. Taking the first step, walking into uh, uh, into the church. The pastor says that I walked in, I had an army jacket, a green jacket with holes in my elbows and, you know, kind of raggedy. And he said, you know what? He's going to be like one of those guys who's going to come in and walk out and never come back. Because a lot of times we got to be honest with ourselves, you know, when you're in, the, in church and building the, the work of God, you see a lot of people coming in and, and, come, and going out. And it's sad to say that, but he was truthful with me. You know, that was the feeling that he felt when, you know, when he seen me. And it was more than that. I'm just saying one part, because every time we uh, see anybody walking into church, we have that hope that this person... We're going to have the metaphors. We're going to see the change. We're going to believe God that this people is going to be touched and changed by the power of God. But we also, as human beings, we also are honest with, with, with ourselves that uh, a lot of times people come in and, and they go. They don't stay. And that's normal. You know, I was one of them. For many years, I used to go to church. I shared in the beginning that... Uh, uh, all loaded on heroin and just sit there and not out and, and you know but God was working God was working back in the late 1800s with my grandparents so if you think that hope is there we're wrong one of the things that I share with people that I'm I asked them to describe the Lord Christ. Oh, uh, describe me, God. Just you know, just 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 think of what I'm asking, and 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 give me your your best shot. How how do you see God? And of course, they give me a uh, beautiful. I mean, they they tell me all kinds of beautiful things. His love. He's I mean, you name it, that's God. And I said, you know what? You're wrong. And I'm going to tell you why. Because if you think God is love, he's a million, a billion times more than that. So many times we box God into something that our minds begins to make. 
and we think this is God. He cannot heal me. He can heal the neighbor. He cannot touch my marriage, but he can touch somebody else. We can preach about it. But a lot of times we have that issue that uh, we minimize, you know, the greatness of God. And it sounds like uh, idolatry. And I got to be really careful when I approach God because God is more than my understanding gets. God is so big, so great. So I pray that God will build, uh, 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 he will drop a seed in the, in the heart of those who are listening right now. Because many times we are wrong and not thinking about God. Because God is more than that. And as I allowed myself to to fall in the hands of God when I walked in in the church, when I, I started coming back on, the, on, on uh, every Sunday, every Wednesday, twice on Sunday, uh, 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 Wednesday, uh, the, the bands, God was changing me, beginning to, 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 to move inside of me and removing some of that, uh, the, the things that I was so engraved on because all I knew was heroin, stealing. And, I mean, that was, you know, there's a lot of dark side of my life. Many years in the world, walking with Satan, that I gave my best to him. Now that I have a better understanding, I'm trying to have a better understanding of God, of the greatness of God. My faith is so small many times. To try to see the goodness of God and the greatness of God. Late 1800s, the prayers of my, my, my grandparents and his brother and all this, it just went through. It just, it just passed time. And I'm talking here. And the reason is because that. And, and you know, I believe tonight. God has been doing things, not only, you know, with us, but with other people. And he's just asking for a little bit. She just said, I will work with whatever you give me, he says. Whatever you, you have, he will work with. Even sometimes a little bit of faith. He would run with that. He will make that a change that it, it will blow your mind. He's capable of, make a, of making a new creation. Amazing, huh? That's, that's, that's part of uh, my testimony. I don't think, uh, uh, I mean, it's so hard to just bring everything in one half an hour, an hour. But uh, if you let me, I would like to pray uh, as we close right now. I would like to uh, ask God. I I said right now that I'm really careful how I approach God. He's not my sugar daddy. He's not that uh, that uh, uh, you know. I come and I grab the bottle and uh, a genie. He's more. He's he's my father. If if there's anybody right now running because a lot of times we do that we run we hide god is ready for you whoever whoever the, the person is god is ready and that's one part second part that uh, if you've never been saved you never if you never heard about the the gospel I would like to tell you today that uh, the good news is uh, Jesus Christ, His resurrection, His power to change you and I and anybody, if we let Him. And I believe God wants to come into our hearts. Brother, I would like to make a simple prayer and just invite anybody who's listening to us right now and uh, who uh, are struggling, backsliding, who, who walked away from the Lord, who knows the Lord. And wants to make a, 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 a commitment, a fresh 
a new commitment, you know, this will be the, the time. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Uh, for those who are never asked Christ into their heart, you know, today, God is giving you a challenge to try him. And you will see the goodness of God. And you will taste the first fruits of the promise that salvation. And uh, I just want to, whoever wants to pray, he will repeat with me, after me, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your faithfulness, for your goodness. Father, I pray that you will entune your ear to my prayer. Because I want to ask you to forgive me for all the wrong that I have done for all my sins and I want to ask you to come into my life and change my life I want to give you my life tonight and I pray that you will receive me in Jesus name Amen simple prayer but God is here God is helping us and uh, Brother Junior thank you for that uh, opportunity the platform that you open for us and uh, I pray that God will bless you richly in many different ways. One of the things that I I share a lot of times in the church that are the best gift is our family. Their salvation. Our, I have a lot of nephews and nieces and and I pray for them I, that uh, God would just plant a seed on their hearts. God to bring them to salvation, to the knowledge of the love and the goodness of God. Thank you again, brother, for inviting me. And uh, if you have any any questions. No, any that's good. <clears throat> I like that. <clears throat> I like what you said. You know, you said that one of the greatest blessings is is is, um, is seeing our family saved, right? There's nothing like there's nothing like that. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, amen. That's, that's really good this day. Uh, Pastor Joshua, amen. You know, we really um, been encouraged. You know, once again, we pray that you've been, uh, we pray that you've been exhorted and your, that your faith has increased, right? Once again, a Christian, Christian testimonies are stories told by believers about what God has done and is doing in their lives today, right? I believe it's the pastor. Joshua just shared with us, you know, what God is doing in his life today. Um, which was a great blessing. I pray that many of you guys been uh, been uh, stay encouraged once again. You know, the word of exhortation is is a rebuke and an encouragement. You know, and I believe as the Pastor Joshua just gave us that he gave us a, a, a rebuke and he encouraged us, right? <laughs> uh, but you know, once again, you know, your story is the key that can unlock someone else's prison. For only God can turn a mess into a message and a test into a testimony. Okay. With that said. Muchas gracias. You know, once again, I, I, I thank you guys for tuning in to the Help From Above radio show, Help From Above Ministries, and uh, we'll see you guys again. Any last words, hermano? Thank you, and God bless you, brother, and I pray that each and every one who uh, were able to listen to us and to be blessed, and uh, above everything, that uh, he will come to a, a knowledge and understanding of the love of Christ, salvation. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Muchísimas gracias. All right, brother. Have a good night. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. He the truth, the way to life. He the truth, the way to life. He the truth, the way to life. I'ma slide, I'ma ride just like a bike. He my God, he my light. In the spirit, I'ma fight. Devil always trying to get up in my mind. Gotta beat him like a lion. Like a lion, I'ma roar. In the presence, I'ma hit him with that pump. He can't open up no door. In the field with my bro We be preaching to the Chico's in the zone We gon' reach them on the low We gon' teach them about the Lord We gon' move in the spirit like a pro No religion, that's a no They be thinking that they know Till we hit them with that Holy Ghost flow.